In dry eye disease, one of the many things we test for is the function of the meibomian gland structure. In this video, I'll be introducing one of the tiniest tools we use in clinic as a diagnostic instrument, and this is the Corb meibomian gland evaluator. What does this little guy do and how do we use it? Watch on to find out. Hey YouTube, my name is Dr. Natalie Chai and this channel brings you the latest science-based education and treatments in dry eye disease, myopia management, and specialty contact lenses to help you understand why it should matter to you for optimal eye health, function, comfort, and even beauty. By now, I think you may have a pretty good idea that dry eye disease is a big deal affecting hundreds of millions of people worldwide to varying degrees and counting. We know through studies that as much as 86% of dry eye can be attributed in part to meibomian gland dysfunction or MGD. I'm sure your optometrist or ophthalmologist have used this terminology to describe your dry eye. Let's do a quick review together. Now the tear film layer consists of three layers. Layers, the lipid layer, aqueous layer, and mucin layer. Looking only at the oil or mybum comes from the meibomian glands. If you remember from my previous videos on the Oculus Keratograph 5M and the Mediworks Firefly Slit Lamp, I use these diagnostic tools to visualize and evaluate the meibomian glands in the lower and upper lids. Now there are about 25 to 40 meibomian glands in the upper lid and 20 to 30 glands in the lower lid. Being able to see the degree of gland atrophy and dropout gives us great insight to the morphological structure. In the TFOS DUCE 2 report, it made us aware that mybography alone is not sufficient enough for the diagnosis of MGD. We need to explore further to measure the function of the gland. Well, the function of those that still remain. Similar to when we diagnose glaucoma, we need to know both structure by scanning the optic nerve and also also evaluating the function by performing everybody's favorite test, the visual field. However, for an official diagnosis to be made for glaucoma, we are looking for a consistent change over a period of time for confidence in the diagnosis. Whereas in comparison in meibomian gland dysfunction, the moment we observe any abnormalities in structure and a decrease in function, we can be absolute certain that the patient has dry eye disease. So how do we assess the functionality of the meibomian glands? In general, we're grading the meibum or oil quantity, quality, and expressibility, and we use the core meibomian gland evaluator. It's a small device that looks like a USB stick. It is the only instrument that provides a standardized, repeatable evaluation of the meibomian gland. To evaluate the expressibility of meibum as an indicator of meibum secretion, I apply the evaluator and gently depress along the lower lid of each eye while observing through the slit lamp microscope. The pressure applied simulates the pressure of a deliberate force blink. The standardized force replicated is 1.25 grams per millimeter squared over an area of approximately 40 millimeters squared. I usually like to start along the outer lower lid, then move to the center, then finally move to the inner nasal lid. In each zone, I'm trying to include about five glands at a time for a total of about 15. The result is looking for an olive oil secretion. This is known as meibomian gland yielding liquid secretions or MGYLS as coined by Korb and Blackie in their study. Simultaneously, I can determine how much meibum is also being expressed. To assess the quality of meibum, we are also looking at the clarity and also thickness of the secretion. In the normal eyelid, meibum is clear and readily expressed with gentle pressure as simulated to that of the evaluator. Individuals with meibomian gland dysfunction have altered chemistry to the meibum or oil quality. What can be observed then is that the meibum can lose its clarity and become super cloudy all the way to the point of it being opaque with increased thickness. This is where it looks like toothpaste and becomes very difficult for expression and it can be very uncomfortable for the patient when attempted. 
I grade the results as such, where zero denotes absolutely no secretion on pressure, one denotes expressibility, however, the mybum is of thick and toothpaste-like consistency, two denotes expressibility with liquid secretions, however, it looks milky or cloudy, and finally, a grade of three denotes good expressibility with liquid and clear secretions. Now going back to the Hallmark study from Corb and Blackie in 2008, they found that patients became symptomatic when only six glands total were functioning normally. So again, functioning normally means that these glands were secreting liquid and clear quality mybum. This finding has been replicated clinically by numerous optometrists. I found a very close correlation myself. This is another excellent way to verify the presence of MGD in diagnosis as well as determining success of treatment. We hope that with the success of treatment, it is accompanied by the resurrection of these glands, which is possible with carefully chosen strategies and compliance of the patient at home. Through the improvement of function along with structure, can the dysfunction be alleviated as well? We also hope then that the patient also experiences improvement in their dry eye symptoms. The CORB MGE is a very simple test that tells us a lot about a patient's dry eye. The evaluation takes about two minutes per eye, so it's a very seamless addition to even a routine slit lamp eye examination. Before the invention of the CORB meibomian gland evaluator, the traditional procedure was to use this, or this, or even this. We use this in the same manner. Now the only problem was that the pressure applied was not consistent between exams, let alone sometimes even across the same lid in the same evaluation. But hey, it is better than nothing and I used to use this method not so long ago. Who knew we could get all this information from this tiny tool? Well, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something today. If you look forward to learning about cool stuff we use in clinic, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my new YouTube videos every Thursday. Take care of your eyes and we'll see you in the next video.